In this video, we'll explore three of Pia Crambling's most intriguing games in the Sicilian Con, uncovering her exceptional strategies and tactical brilliance. The first opponent is a former Hungarian women's chess champion, Nicoletta Lakos. She starts e4 and Pia replies c5 the Sicilian defense. Knight f3 developing is followed by e6 opening up the kingside bishop. Then white thrusts forward in the center with d4 offering an exchange of pawns to open up the position. Black obliges, capturing, and white recaptures with the knight. Then black plays a6, unveiling the con variation of the Sicilian defense. In playing the Sicilian con, black is keeping her position as flexible as possible, not committing any of her minor pieces just yet. a6 also stops the knight from going to b5, where it could exploit weak dark squares in black's camp. White replies with bishop d3, preparing to castle. Pia's g6 looks to fianchetto the bishop. This is hilariously called the Swiss cheese variation, and I'm guessing it's because of all the holes in the position. White castles and black develops the bishop onto the long diagonal hitting the knight. So white defends it with c3. Then black prepares to castle with knight g to e7, not blocking the bishop's vision. White's knight a3 develops without impeding her own bishop. Black follows with knight b to c6, trying to take twice on d4 and win a pawn. White initiates the exchange, capturing the knight, and black recaptures towards the center with the b-pawn. This helps to support a d5 pawn break when the time is right. Then white lifts her queen to e2, creating a battery aimed at a6, and opening the d1 square for one of her rooks. Now Pia doesn't want to jump the gun and play d5 with her king still uncastled. She also wants to prevent white from playing e5, which would cramp her position. So she plays d6, stopping e5. White's bishop g5 pins the knight to the queen, and black's h6 forces the bishop's hand. It retreats to e3 before black castles her king to safety. Then white plays queen d2, adding an attacker to the h6 pawn. So black plays king h7, defending. White continues by swinging her rook over from a to d1, adding pressure down the d-file. At this moment, before it's too late, Pia thrusts forward in the center with d5. White should avoid taking, as it would give black a firm grip over the center. She plays bishop c5, exploiting the now weakened c5 square to pin the knight to the rook. Black develops her queen to c7, and white advances with f4, with the plan of either closing the position with e5, or breaking it open with f5. Black gets her rook out of the pin, moving it to e8, and white slides her queen to f2, coordinating with her bishop, and looking to swing over to the kingside. Just when things are beginning to look promising for white, Pia pushes f5, stopping any further white expansion. The e-pawn is under attack twice, so white is forced to make a decision. Pushing might overextend, and black could consider playing g5 to undermine white's weak e5 pawn. White captures on f5 instead, and black recaptures with the e-pawn, opening the e-file for her rook. Then white moves her knight to c2, rerouting it towards the center. Black's knight g8 also looks to maneuver the knight to a more active square. White proceeds by contesting the open e-file with her rook, and black develops her bishop to d7, connecting her rooks. Then white sees a tactic here to potentially win a pawn. She grabs the rook on e8, and while black could recapture with the bishop, she decides to take back with the rook, activating it on the open e-file. But, this hangs the pawn on a6, and white feasts on it. Pia, undeterred by her pawn deficit, moves her knight to f6, getting ready to pounce on the weak squares in white's camp. Her rationale is that white's bishop is out of place, and she can target the fragile queenside pawns. Also, the knight is going to e4, where it would fork the queen and the bishop, and the white queen's only safe square to protect the bishop is e3, where it would walk right into discovered attacks by the rook. So white retreats the bishop to d3, guarding the e4 square. Black jumps her knight to g4, hitting the queen, who sidesteps to f3. Then black plays queen a5, forking the bishop and the pawn. Now white should play a move like b4, defending her bishop and giving up the pawn. Black could take the pawn, but then white would be the side with more active play. Instead, white gets a little bit greedy, playing bishop a3, trying to hold on to her extra pawn. But this is a huge mistake. Black has a beautiful combination here to win the game. Can you find it?
There are actually two moves here that win, but they have exactly the same idea. The bishop no longer guards this diagonal. So Pia plays, queen b6, check. And queen a7 would also work. After seeing this, white throws in the towel and resigns. White has no way to block the check without hanging a piece, and knight d4 would only delay things since black would capture on d4 twice each time with check. Moving the king to f1 would run into not only a royal fork, but checkmate. The best bet is going to the corner after which knight f2 check would push the king back into discovered check territory, and black would take the rook with check, giving her time to save her knight by taking another pawn. Black would be up a full rook. The next opponent is international master Lassie Lovick, and he meets the Sicilian Khan with knight c3. Pia plays queen c7, preventing both e5 and bishop f4, and white follows with bishop e2 preparing to castle. Black develops her knight to f3, pressuring white's center. After white castles, black develops her bishop to c5, and white supports his knight, developing the bishop to e3, before black castles. Then white plays f4, gaining valuable ground in the center. To prevent further advances, black plays d6. White lifts his queen to d3, connecting the rooks while supporting his e4 pawn. Pia follows with b5, planning to fianchetto the bishop, and white moves his bishop to f3 in order to contest the long diagonal. After black places her bishop on b7, white slides his rook to the semi-open d5. Black develops her final minor piece with knight b to d7, and white plays the cautious move, a3, to prevent black from getting too aggressive. Black swings her rook over to support her center, and white moves his knight back to b3, hitting black's bishop twice. Black is happy to exchange pieces as the side with less space, and takes on e3. White recaptures with his queen, and with no more dark squared bishop for black, the pawn on d6 is slightly weaker. After black slides the rook to the semi-open c-file, white lifts his rook to d3, preparing to double up on the delicate d6 pawn. Now, in case the e-pawn were ever to move, or the white knight advances, black's bishop would be under fire. So Pia retreats her bishop to a8, ensuring that it is well protected, and now her queen can endeavor on her own quests. White doubles his rooks, threatening the d6 pawn. So black moves her knight to b6, opening her rook's defense. Black's knight is planning to jump to c4, which would be a pain to deal with. So white moves his knight to a5 to prevent that. And with this lull in the action, Pia does not skip another beat, and lunges in the center with d5. This eliminates her only weakness, the d-pawn, and soon her pieces will spring to life. White shouldn't capture on d5 because the knight would recapture opening the queen's attack on white's hanging knight. He should probably close things up with e5, but that would make his doubled rooks look stupid. He chooses b4 to protect his knight. Pia captures on e4, spurring the game into a chaotic hailstorm. White could try recapturing with the knight, but black would take with the bishop, then take the rook on d3. If white were to take back with the bishop, rook, or the pawn, then black would play knight b to d5, forking the queen and winning the pawn. Otherwise, black would take the bishop, luring the queen to e4, before playing knight d5, threatening both pawns, and knight c3 with a fork on the rook and the queen. Back to the game. In light of this, white exchanges off both sets of rooks, leading to the black queen landing on d8. At this point, white has to accept that he will be a pawn down with an inferior position, but that's just a hard thing to do. And he also probably missed the threat. He captures the pawn on e4, and it wouldn't have mattered with which piece, the continuation would be the same. Pia captures the knight with her bishop, and in realization of his grim fate, white resigns. White is down a piece right now, and if he were to take back the bishop, then black would have a fantastic combination to win the game. Can you find it? The move Pia would play is queen d1 check. This would force the king to f2, after which she would play knight g4 with a royal fork. Black would be up a decisive amount of material.
The final opponent is a former Bulgarian women's chess champion, and she meets the Sicilian Khan with knight c3. Pia plays queen c7, controlling key squares, and white develops her bishop to d3, preparing to castle. With the bishop interfering with the queen's defense of the knight, black plays bishop c5, threatening the piece. So white drops her knight back to b3, counterattacking, and black retreats her bishop to e7. After white castles, black plays d6, opening up her queenside minor pieces, before white thrusts forward with f4. Black develops her knight to d7, and white launches her queen to f3, with plans of pressuring the black kingside. Pia does not panic, calmly proceeding her development with knight g to f6. White plays bishop d2, and black's non-confrontational approach continues, with b6 looking to fianchetto the bishop. White activates her last piece with rook a to e1 centralizing the rook, and black plays bishop b7 peering at the enemy queen. She immediately gets out of the way with queen g3 attacking the g7 pawn. Black replies with g6, opting to keep her king in the center for now, since her position is as solid as a steel safe. White moves her king to h1, getting out of any potential checks along the diagonal and black begins hostilities with h5, expanding on the king side. Then white pushes with f5, but this is a slight slip up. White was hoping to open the center, but Pia captures with the g-pawn, opening the g-file, which her rook will soon occupy. White realizing that if she took back, then black would move her rook to g8, skewering the queen and the pawn with the assistance of the sniper bishop. So she moves her queen out of the way to h3 instead. Black instantly shifts her rook to g8 and white lifts her rook to e2 to defend the g2 pawn. Black castles queenside, tucking the king safely behind his royal bodyguards. White captures on f5, making use of the pin on the pawn to the bishop. Pia gleefully responds with e5, closing the center. Now she will turn her full attention towards the enemy king. White plays knight e4 in a desperate bid to exchange pieces, but Pia just plays rook g4 attacking the knight and preparing to double rooks. White captures the knight on f6 and black replaces it with another knight. Then white moves her rook to f2, opening up the square for her bishop, before black swings her rook over from d to g1 at putting three attackers onto g2. White is forced to defend with her rook, and her pieces are just all tied up. Pia's a5 looks to play a4, forcing white's pieces further into a state of desolate disarray. White tries frantically to fight back with bishop e2 hitting the rook, but black is relentless, playing knight e4, attacking white's rook with the threat of smothered checkmate. If the rook were to retreat, then black would play rook h4, and once the queen would move, knight g3 check would exploit the pin on the pawn to the king, and white would be forced to give up her queen for the rook and be down a boatload of material. So, white plays rook f3 instead. Pia simply slides her rook to h4, and white's queen is completely trapped. So, white resigns. I hope these games were both entertaining and instructive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more chess content.